Hey, what's going on, Internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. How's everyone doing today? We got a great tutorial. We're going to be creating floor reflections with your motion graphics. So this reflection that you see right here on the floor, I'll turn it on and off real quick. That's what we'll be creating, obviously, with the floor, and you can see how nice that reflection is, and you'll have a lot of control over this effect. Now, this video was inspired from several Video Hive templates that have the floor reflections, and this video is sponsored by Video Hive. So, if you're in the need of royalty free, high quality After Effects project files, Video Hive is the place to go for pre made templates that are professionally made. And if you're looking for inspiration on this effect, go ahead and check out my links in the description that show off really nice reflections, and you can take a look at some of the elements that they used to create great contrast in the you know the brightness using lights or you could say lens flares uh, to create great reflections and just great to look for inspiration and if you're in that time crunch these are pre-made templates that save you a ton of time and of course money so let's go ahead and jump in the video and be sure to check out our links in the description to get some more inspiration or to save some time so here we are in doing new composition I have my composition here now I did a full tutorial on this effect a while back you can go ahead and check out our tutorial right here I'll link it in the description if you want to watch this and learn how to do a light uh, stroke reveal with no plugins so you'll be able to follow along no matter what and I'm gonna take this composition and I'm gonna use this as our reflection because there's good you know contrast in this obviously we have some lens flares in here and as you see we put on another lens flare overlay right here as I turn it on and off so let's go ahead and let's do this so first things first you want to bring in a floor right so I have this image here it doesn't really matter what it looks like as long as it looks you know I guess grungy or it has a floor texture whatever you want your floor to look like go ahead and bring that texture inside your composition so you might need to google you know uh, floor texture or like a grunge texture and you should be able to make this work with any texture that you have. Just go ahead and Google it, and you should be able to find what you need. So we bring this, you know, obviously this image into our composition. What we want to do is we want to make this a 3D layer. So what we can do is hit R on our keyboard for rotation, and we can increase the X rotation here until we can kind of see this at a vertical angle. So I'm at 82 degrees. And there is our floor. And of course, if we want, we could bring this down. And of course, we can hit S on keyboard for scale, and we can scale this up, be a little bit bigger. And there's our floor. We're basically done here. So what we want to do is we'll pre-compose this layer. So you can go up to Layer, Pre-Compose. And we'll do this so we can swap it out a little bit later and have a little bit more control over it. Click on Move All Attributes into New Composition. And boom, there is our floor. And you need to make this layer back to a 3D layer. And you need to click on this uh, vector icon. It's called uh, Continuously... Uh, rasterizing or something like that and click on that so you can have all those same elements over there and make your uh, your graphics so when you have your graphics done make sure that's in its own composition and you can make this into a 3d layer as well okay so we can we're going to hide the floor layer we don't need that so now we'll come here to our you know our motion graphics here so this is my stroke effect and we're going to go up to edit duplicate so when you got your effects done go ahead and duplicate your comps and we'll come over here go to layer transform and we'll click on flip vertical we can bring this downward you have to right there and actually we could reposition our graphics if we want so the, the bottom here will be our uh, reflection and we can you know always change the position and you know that's fine and what I suggest doing if you have like obviously these lines in here what I would do is I would grab the rectangle tool and I would just you know try to mass this off a little bit so you come here Go to subtract and feather it and kind of just feather the edges a little bit so, so they blend you know well together. All right, this way everything will blend nicely together. Now what we want to do is we want to go to layer new adjustment layer and we want to put this layer on top of the reflection layer and make sure the adjustment layer is a 3D layer or this will not work. Go to effect, blur and sharpen and add compound blur. Now we need to go to the blur layer and we need to set this to floor. All right, now we have a good reflection in here, and if you come here to the maximum blur, you can increase this, and now we have that floor texture coming back in, and that blur looks nicely in there. So you can see we increase this. You can see the blur is getting a little bit more sharpened out, and obviously the more you increase it, you know, the more, I guess, less reflective it looks, but the more blurred out it does look, and then, of course, you keep it at a lower end. It just looks like a, you know, a very solid reflection. So something to keep in mind when you're doing this sort of effect and if you want to take this even further, you can go to your reflection layer, go to effect, blur and sharpen, and you can add, say, a fast box blur. And you can increase this by a little bit, and this will kind of just soften things by a touch if you want to go that direction. So maybe just like four or so, a little before and after. It kind of helps softens out that blur a little bit. So here's our original layer, and here's our blurred layer. So if there's any issues with this, make sure 3D 
a 3D layer is unabled, and you might have to mess with the blend mode of your, you know, your original composition just because, you know, you might not have made it transparent or anything like that. So it just helps a little bit more if you need to, you know, mess with, you know, add light in a screen when you go to your blend mode. So just keep that in mind. That might troubleshoot any issues that you might be having. And then for one last technique, let's talk about this top area here. So obviously we have like all these nice colors in here and your, you know, your composition is going to vary depending on what you're looking to do. Uh, obviously the black area here is because the background you know, there's nothing there. It's just you know a black screen. So what we can do to mix this up? Go to layer, new, solid, and we can you know make a nice color here. Maybe we'll do like magenta, and click OK. So we have a nice solid in here. We can put this underneath everything. Make sure that's a 3D layer, and we'll come over here. We'll grab our rectangle tool. We'll just mask this out. Go to subtract, and of course we'll feather this. And then we come over here to lower the opacity, and we can lower the opacity a little bit. And this will add just a little bit more, you know, color to the background, you know, so maybe like 11%. So, you know, you have the ability to blend in like your floor and your background together. So that looks, you know, really cool. So here's our composition with just, you know, the lights in here. There's no text and everything's going to be lit up in this composition because of the contrast, right? So let's say you want to control the floor a little bit more. Say you want to control how much is being seen. Go to the floor layer in that composition. Go to effect color correction curves. And if you brighten this up, we go back to our main comp, you'll see that, actually, I don't know if there's a, actually, yeah, hold on. You can see that by increasing the curves, we have a little bit more texture in this composition. So this is with the curves adjusted, and this is without the curve. So you get a little bit more texture. If we come here and bring this down a little bit, we kind of crushed it a little bit, you'll actually get more of, you know, it becomes a little bit more smooth. Um, I, of course, I prefer it to have a little bit more texture in it. And now there's that nice floor back and returned. And we'll go here and turn our comp back on. So boom, there's our entire composition. And that looks really nice. So that was a great way to set up a reflection for your motion graphics. And here's just another example of what this can look like. Uh, go ahead and check out some of the, our links in the description to get some inspiration. And like, and like I said, if you're looking for a high-end motion graphics template, like a logo intro or a bunch of series of titles, go ahead and check out our links in the description, which have the same style of what we're creating right here. Go ahead and check it out. It saves you a ton of time. So I hope you guys found this video insightful and are able to take away a few techniques from this video. If you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to drop a like because it helps me understand that this video was good. Subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos just like this. And hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And always be creative.